Well, hello, everyone. Thank you all so much for joining us today. If you don't know me, my name is Julia Chen. I am the Activities Director at the Yale Club, and I'm very excited to welcome you all to our virtual Libations and Learning. And today we'll be focusing on mold wine. So I want to introduce to you John Carlos Fidaro, who is the Director of Banquets at the Club and who will be leading tonight and telling us a little bit about how to make some mold wine. So John Carlo, turn it over to you. Good evening, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. This is our third class together, I think. Uh, very excited. We're going to go over a very festive uh, recipe. And uh, as always, there's going to be some uh, little notes just to give you a little history, a little background on this, uh, on this drink. And um, when everybody's ready, we can just start. I'm going to go over the ingredients. And if anybody wants to cook along, please uh, feel free to do so, because this is going to be more of an interactive class. I'm actually going to cook and go over the recipe live. And if there is any questions, please feel free to tell Julia and she is going to kind of stop me and then we're going to go over any, any questions or any concerns that you have. So before we start, let's just go over the ingredients. Um, Mold wine, it's basically a wine-based beverage. It usually, it, it uses a red wine and we go with a Cabernet. We're using tonight the Murphy Good, which is one of the wines that we carry here at the club. And um, it's basically a reduction of red wine and then it adds a, a, a variety of spices. Uh, for tonight, we're gonna go with the traditional recipe, which is star anise, uh, cinnamon sticks, cloves, and then honey. And some fresh fruit, we're gonna use an orange tonight. Um, before we start, um, I just wanted to see if anybody knows uh, the origin of mulled wine. If anybody uh, has been drinking it for a while, if anybody knows where it was, who created it, when for the first time, was the person of the, the people that drank it for the first time. So if anybody knows, please feel free to drop it in the comments or tell Julia, because I would love to see if anybody knows, and then we can discuss it a little bit later. So first and foremost, uh, I have my little stove here. So hopefully everything goes well with the stove. We are gonna turn it on, on medium heat. So we don't wanna burn the wine. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna let the pan heat up a little bit. You can use a medium sized saucepan and the first ingredient that is going to go in our pan, a medium heat, it's going to be our Cabernet. So tonight we're going to use a full bottle of wine. And when uh, we use a full bottle of wine, that should be enough for six portions. So you should get six nice sized glasses. We're going to open our wine and we're just going to put it straight into the pan. Okay. Excellent. So Giancarlo, is there a reason you chose a cab specifically? Uh, so the reason why we chose a Cabernet is because Cabernet is the heaviest of the red wines and it has a thicker body and a thicker consistency. You could totally use a Pinot Noir or there is a, a good variety of Italian wines that you can use, but I definitely would not use a Merlot because it's too light. And the Cabernet generally is just as a very fruity bouquet and it's a very strong wine. So being that we're gonna make a reduction and we're gonna cook it, actually we're gonna simmer it, you wanna use a wine that has a thick consistency. So once the reduction uh, and once it starts cooking, all the flavors are gonna get even stronger. So you want a wine that has a strong body and that has a strong consistency. That's why we're doing Cabernet tonight. Okay, so after we put the wine, in our pan, we're just gonna wait and we're just gonna just gently mix it over medium heat. And we're just gonna let it sit for a few minutes. And as I mentioned, we're gonna add a few spices. Now, I don't know if anybody answered the question, but the first people that actually created the mold wine were the Romans in the second century. And it wasn't really a drink of pleasure. It wasn't like having a cocktail, relaxing after a long day of work. It was mostly for necessity because um, they used to drink warm wine to fend and to fight during the winter times. So this was a drink that specifically the army, all the soldiers that would walk on foot and travel from like one region to the other would drink, uh, especially during the winter months because it would keep their bodies warm. And wine was very popular. It was really easy and accessible for everybody. And so they decided to warm it up and drink it because it was going to keep their bodies warm. So it was out of necessity. It was almost like a medicine for them. 
And then, as I said, we're gonna use a few different spices. And really, you can go crazy with the spices that you wanna use. Some of the better ones, uh, as I mentioned, is star anise, uh, cinnamon, and cloves, which if you look into the spices that there's them themselves, they're very medicinal. All of the spices are, are known to boost your metabolism and they're really good for you. So they will mix all the spices with the warm wine because it will be almost like a medicine, almost like when we drink tea and lemon, when we have a cold or when we're feeling a little sick because it will just give your body some extra nutrients and some extra vitamins to fight off any possible uh, diseases or like if you were getting a cold. So with something really healthy that will keep them warm and help them fight any possible diseases. So once the wine warms up and we can, I don't know if you can see there is a little smoke coming out, we're gonna add six of the star anise and six is just a general number. You just don't wanna put too much because star anise has a really strong flavor. So you can just get the full star anise. You don't need to crush it or anything and you can add it to the wine once it starts boiling. Then we're gonna get three cinnamon sticks and we're just gonna drop it inside our mixture. Then we're gonna get some cloves. I would say just a pinch, almost like if you were putting some salt or pepper, just a pinch of cloves. And then at this point, we're gonna cut our orange. And specifically, I would not do lemon. I would just really use orange because otherwise the lemon is a little too citrusy and we want something a little sweeter. So if you see that your wine starts boiling, like it's happening to me, you definitely want to reduce the flame because we don't want to boil or burn the wine. We just want to make it simmer. So you put as low as you can, and then we cut a few slices of orange. I usually like to do two or three slices. And we're going to add it very carefully. You don't want it to splash because it's pretty warm. We're going to add it to our mixture. Now, I've seen on a bunch of websites that they say to put all the ingredients together at once, which you can totally do. That wouldn't be wrong. But I personally like to have the one warm, the one warm up first. And once you get at a decent temperature, then I add my spices. And as you can see, we also have some honey because this will help make the drink a little sweeter because cloves, cinnamon, uh, the star anise can be a little bitter and they're very pungent. So you wanna use something really sweet, which like honey, to make your drink a little more pleasurable when you drink it. Um, if somebody asks you, do I necessarily need to use honey? Uh, honey is not the only sweetener that you can use. Uh, I've seen people using maple syrup, which is also fine. So if somebody prefers maple syrup, you can totally do maple syrup, uh, but we're gonna do honey and I'm not gonna add it right away because I don't want the sugar to burn. So I'm gonna wait and I'm gonna put a timer because we're gonna cook everything for around 10 minutes. So I will put a timer and when there is four to three minutes left, then we're gonna add the honey uh, towards the end. Also, I've seen a lot of recipes and some people like to add bourbon. Uh, bourbon is not the only one that you can add, but definitely you can put bourbon, but also I've seen some people adding ginger beer. So if there is any ginger beer lovers, you can add ginger beer, bourbon, and there is also different versions of this drink. Like you don't necessarily need to put uh, bourbon or ginger beer. You can also put uh, apple cider and you can make it more of a, like a full bean drink. But for now, our main ingredients is a Bernay, star anise, cinnamon, cloves. And in about five minutes, we're gonna add our honey. And you wanna always make sure that the flame is low and that we keep mixing it and we just want it to simmer. So we want all of the ingredients, all of the flavors to blend in and almost like the wine we wanted to absorb all of the flavors. So I'm gonna put a little warmer, just a tiny bit. And I wish you could smell it. If anybody's cooking with us tonight, this smells amazing already. And uh, we're just gonna wait a few minutes. So if anybody has any questions or if anybody has any other recipes or any other ideas, I would love if anybody wants to share with us so we can talk about it. Um, but pretty, so far, it's pretty easy, pretty straightforward. My wine is simmering with all the ingredients and it smells absolutely delicious.
Yeah, so as Andrea was saying, um, this is definitely meant to be very communal. So if anyone wants to unmute themselves and talk about what they're experiencing and share any stories of mold wine that you have, we're happy to um, have you speak up. But I'd love to talk a little bit about the oranges that you're putting in. So I've noticed you did slice them very thickly and you put it in with the rind included. Um, yes. If you aren't so much of a fan of some of those more, I guess, oily, not oily, but like the rind flavors, is that something you could leave out? Uh, absolutely. So the oranges is just because it adds the vitamin C. As I was saying before, uh, this was a drink that came out of necessity. It wasn't really uh, an after hour drinks that people would just enjoy after a long day of work or after working at the farm. This was something that they created almost as a, um, as a tea, as an option to keep their bodies healthy during the winter time. So originally this was, they will only drink it during the winter time. And then as we know, the Roman empire became the largest empire known to human, to men at the time. And all of their colonies started drinking mulled wine as well. And then it became almost like a holiday drink. So now we drink it throughout the winter and during Christmas time and we enjoy it. But back then it was a necessity. So oranges are packed with vitamin C. So the Romans knew it back in the days and all the civilizations after the Romans that adapted this drink also knew that oranges, lemons, uh, grapefruit's really good for you. So you don't have to necessarily add the oranges. And I think that it just gave, it, it, it gives a better taste. It makes it taste like way better. But I also know that the peel can be a little bitter. So tonight I didn't cut the peel off, but if some people don't necessarily love the idea of oranges with the peel in it, you can just peel your orange first and uh, discard it and just use the orange itself. So the drink, it's gonna be sweeter without any of the peel or the, like the bitterness of the peel. Got it. So what I'm hearing is that this is warming for when it's cold out, it's healthy, it's good for you. So yes. basically we should all just be carrying around our coffee cups these days when it's cold outside. We, we, sh we should all carry one of our thermos and uh, pretend that we're drinking coffee, but we're really drinking mulled wine. Yes, <laughs> I agree. I also, uh -huh. for, a, for a fun fact, um, back to my home country in Italy, uh, all grandmothers we use this as a remedy when when you were getting sick. Um, if I was getting a cold when I was like, I don't want to say my, I don't want to mention my age, but if I was getting a cold when I was younger, my grandmother would always tell me, just come over to my house and I'm gonna cook a little wine and give you a little sip of wine and then you go to sleep. Because the way people used to drink this, uh, right before you go to sleep, you warm up some wine, you make it reduce. So as reducing the wine the concentration of alcohol and the spirit itself gets higher because there is more sugar that, that, that's left off. So if you drink it right before going to sleep, it has a lot of calories and it makes you sweat a lot. So when you're sick, usually you have either a virus or bacteria in your body. When you sweat, your body kicks off all those toxins. So this was really a, a homemade remedy for like a cold or a flu when people couldn't all afford to go to a doctor or when like medicine wasn't as advanced as it was today. So my grandmother many, many times gave me um, some mold wine when I was younger to help me fight a cold or a, or a flu that was coming. Awesome. Um, so we have a question from Paula asking how much honey, how much bourbon? And then a follow-up from Nicole asking, can you add brandy? Okay, so as far as honey, uh, I will use a, a quarter of a cup. So you can do a quarter of a cup up, up to half a cup. It depends how sweet you want it. So here I have a little more than a quarter of a cup. So the rice size, the standard recipe calls for a quarter cup, but you can totally do up to half a cup. And now let me stop you. If you love honey, you can put a full cup and then at that point will be extremely sweet. So I would just stay around one quarter to half a cup max. And then as far as the brandy, you can totally use brandy, absolutely. Brandy, bourbon, I've seen some people using whiskey. I just would not use any uh, rye whiskey because the composition of rye and the ingredients, they don't really um, fare too well with heat. But brandy, bourbon, I've even seen people using cognac. It really depends on your preference. The only one I wouldn't do is rye. But brandy, absolutely. Was there another question that I missed? Um, no, it's more of the questions about the different ratios and the different options. Um, earlier, when you asked the question about the origins, we had yeah. a couple, so one person said England, one person asked Germany, one person asked Portugal, but no one actually guessed 
the correct answer. Well, actually, whoever said England, that's a bravo because the English people are the people that really love the traditional mulled wine uh, since the Romans invented it in the second century. And in England, they still drink mulled wine. It's very popular, but they only drink it during Christmas time. So it's not something that survived in their everyday life throughout the winter. It's a spe specifically a Christmas drink, almost like eggnog, which is going to be another class that we're going to talk about in a few weeks. But in England, they still drink it very much, but only during Christmas time. So if you visit some friends in England during Christmas, most likely 99% of the time, you're going to find a, a nice warm cup of mug wine waiting for you. So I've always thought of mulled wine as, of course, the hot beverage you drink in the Christmas time. I've also seen mulled wine on the shelf, pre-made. Um, yes. And I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that because it's definitely felt weird to me. Um, so, I mean, whoever thought of the idea, great job because, of course, marketing and you increase your sales. But as you can see, this is a very simple recipe. It's, not, it's nothing complicated. It doesn't take that many ingredients. And it's something that it's at its best when it's warm. So as soon as you're done cooking it, you just want to drink it right then and there. It's like if you make tea. When you have a nice warm cup of tea, nothing tastes better than a fresh cup of tea. Then if you leave your tea sitting for like a day or two, yeah, you can still warm it up, but you kind of lose all the accents and the, you lose the taste of the tea leaves. So there is nothing wrong with it. I just don't think it would taste as fresh and as delicious as when it's fresh, as you're just you're done cooking it, it's off the fire, and you just pour it in your cup and you drink it. So I think it's best when it's fresh. Yeah. And my follow-up question was going to be, can you make this ahead of time? But I guess the answer is yes, but no. Uh, you can totally make it ahead of time. I will say there is nothing that expires. So shelf life, it's not an issue. It's not like something you got to drink in three days or it's going to go bad. I just think that the ingredients that you're putting in, the star anise, the cinnamon, as they cook, they release all of their flavor and all of the, the aromas and all of the, I don't want to say vitamins. So it's best if you drink it fresh. I mean, it doesn't take that long. I saw a question that total cooking time is 10 minutes and the answer is yes. Um, it also depends on how much wine you're using. I use a full bottle of wine, so I might let it sit for a few extra minutes because you really want the wine to reduce. So really the trick is if you don't want to follow a timer. Once you see that the volume of wine in the pan, it's almost half, then you know at that point that you're almost ready. So I see that my wine is cooking away, it's simmering, it smells amazing. So at this point, I'm pretty sure that we're close to seven, eight minutes. So we can add the honey now, as I said originally. So we're gonna put the honey in. Pour a cup, pour off a cup of honey. And then we're just gonna give it another mix. And we're just going to let it sit for a little longer. And I think the beauty is, since it is a hot beverage, people can also add more honey if they want it a little bit sweeter in their cups. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, 100%. And um, some of the spices, you can also put ginger, because we all know that fresh ginger, it's amazing. It's like a superfood. Uh, ginger root, it's just great. I know a lot of cultures, uh, they use it if they're getting sick, if you feel that you have a cold, if it's really cold outside and you want to prevent it, because that's the purpose of this drink. It's like helping your body fight any possible cold uh, during wintertime. So you, instead of using star anise, or instead of using cloves, you can totally use fresh ginger. It's just using all those roots and all those dry seeds that you know that are really good for you. So there is a huge variety of uh, dry spices, fresh spices that you can use and ginger is one of those and you can add even more it doesn't have to be three it doesn't have to be one anise two cinnamon three cloves it could be up to four five or even six we have a question from john asking how much alcohol remains once the wine is reduced um so if you look at the recipe itself mold wine usually goes between five percent to fifteen percent of alcohol so Usually a bottle of red wine will go between 11% up to 13%. There is some really strong red wines that are like 14, 15, 16 and a half. But for instance, traditionally Cabernet will be around 12, 13%. So the volume of alcohol that you think of by cooking, it's going to diminish. Actually, it's going to get stronger, as I mentioned. And the volume is going to be about half 
but you're gonna get almost like a quarter percent more alcohol in the drink because it's reduced, so it's more concentrated. So you're gonna have a drink that it's around 15 to 16 percent of alcohol, which is stronger than any red wines that you usually drink. Now I know that there is some red wines that have 17 and a half percent. Those are for sure you're gonna have a good night, but on an average, mock wine is around 16% of alcohol volume. So that's what we're looking at once we're done with this recipe. I think one thing to keep in mind is that we're keeping it at a low simmer. You're not actively boiling off a lot yes. of the alcohol. Yes. If Absolutely. you're boiling, turn down the fire. Excuse me? Oh, not you. I meant if, if oh. anyone's out there and you're, <laughs> I can see it from here and uh, it's too high. <laughs> yes, yes. You just want to, you want to see a simmer. You don't want to see a boiling going crazy. You just want to have a slow simmer and you will know because it smells amazing. So you know that you're doing it right. You don't have to stress about it. It's just like, it's a very easy, simple recipe. The reason why also we put honey at the end because we don't want all the sugar to burn off. So you wait for the last few minutes once all the spices are like release all their flavors and all of the aromas, then you add the honey, keep it another two, three minutes and then you're ready to go. Um, I had a quick question, if that's all right. Um, so I, I am cooking in okay. front of me, and um, the second I added the honey, the smell just um, came. <laughs> I think my brother in the other room is going to get excited soon. Um, but for adding the alcohol, I do have some bourbon. Yes. How much exactly? I'm sorry, I think I maybe missed how much you said, and then when for adding a little bit more of that. Uh, uh, no, no, yeah, you bourbon. actually, I think... You asked and I forgot to answer, so I apologize. As far as the bourbon or brandy or any alcohol that you want to add, I will do half a cup. Half a cup to two thirds of a cup. So actually we're going to add it together because you also want to add it in the middle or towards the end. So we're going to put around half a cup of brandy or bourbon in this case. So yeah, half a cup, it's a, it's, it's a good amount, definitely. You can do a little more, but you don't want your drink to become too strong. Perfect. Thank you so much. Absolutely. So this is a little out of left wing. Would you ever make mold wine with a white wine? I was actually thinking about it and I hope that somebody would ask and unfortunately the answer is no. Uh, I will never do it with, with white wine because number one, as uh, Sauvignon Blanc, it's a really light wine and it's not meant to be aged or to be cooked. Uh, so Sauvignon Blanc, definitely, it would just uh, a huge chunk of the wine family. It's already out because it's a light wine. It's supposed to be, you need to drink it between one or two years since when it's made. Chardonnay on the other side, it's a, it's a stronger white wine. It's almost like a red wine disguised as a white wine. But at the same time, the type of ingredients that are used when you make white wine are way different than the one that you use for red wine. Because let's say white wines usually have tones of grass, uh, star fruit, you can get a lot of citrus, um, but it's very light ingredients. Red wines, you can get blackberries, cherries, there is a lot of oakiness. So the right wine for a mulled wine, it's red wine. And usually a denser, stronger red wine. That's why we're using Cabernet. So unfortunately, for all the white wine lovers, we cannot make more wine with white wine. Or well, you could, but it might not taste very good. I mean, no, definitely you can, but it just definitely won't taste the same. Awesome. So, do how does the uh, how does the wine look right now? The wine looks amazing. So I'm looking, and we are almost to the, at the end of the recipe, because I can see that the volume of my wine, it's almost half. So if I increase the flame just a tiny bit, I think another one or two minutes and we're gonna be ready. I can turn it off, let it cool down a few minutes and then I can pour it and I can go for the tasting part, which is, I'm very excited about because I haven't had more wine in many, many years. So I'm really excited about it actually. Is it possible to overcook the wine with the spices? Absolutely, absolutely. You can totally overcook it. I know that I said 10 minutes. Some people might be looking at the clock and say, oh, it already has been 15 minutes. It depends on the quantities. I use a full bottle of wine, so, and I'm using a little stove. If you have like an amazing 
uh, stove, like kitchen equipment level, like in industrial level, it might heat up way faster. But mine is a tiny one, so it's taking a little longer than what the recipe will call. But if you're at home with a standard size stove, 10 to 12 minutes, it's the ideal time. You can totally overcook it. If it's too warm, you can burn it. So it won't taste as good. It's gonna taste like burnt and a little bitter. And it would just reduce too quickly and you will lose a lot of the flavors. That's why it's gonna simmer for 10 to 15 minutes, let's say. In my case, it's 15 minutes because my stove is really tiny, my burner. But you can totally burn it or overcook it, yes. Would there be any way to make mold wine with ground spices? With ground spices? Yep. If you just don't have, you know, whole cinnamon and cloves at home. Oh, I see. Um, so the answer is yes, you can definitely do it, but then you will need to strain it. And at that point, I don't even know because some of the spices will be very thin, like cinnamon, it's a very thick powder. So it would just kind of melt. And I think it would just overpower the flavor of the wine. Because at the end of the day, you want to have a strong wine aftertaste and the spices are just in the background. You just kind of, you can sense on your tongue that there was clove and cinnamon. You don't really want it to blend and become one drink. You just want to be able to separate them. So this way it's really easy because when you pour it, you can just remove the cloves and the cinnamon sticks. But if you use powder, it will still taste pretty good, but it might be, a, it might have a different consistency. You might just feel on your tongue that there is some grains of like, cinnamon or star anise so you can do it if you don't have it absolutely but i would what i would do instead you could use a tea bag you know that they sell like empty tea bags i would just put all of your spices in the empty tea bags uh they sell different thickness and i would put just a little sash in the wine and cook it with a little tea bag with all of your spices inside so that i think it's a good alternative nice but like a uh i'm gonna butcher this bouquet bouquet garni Yes. Or you tie up the spices. Yes, yes. Actually, it's funny because in some cultures, especially in England, some people like to add a, a, a tea bag. So some people put like either English breakfast or they put like Earl Grey together with your spices. So tea is actually a good alternative. If people, if you don't have star anise or if you don't have all cinnamon, you can use some other spices that you have, like nutmeg will be good. Maybe turmeric will be good. And then you can just put two or three tea bags and let it sit and cook it with the tea bags and it will be as good. That's so interesting. Absolutely. And then so you I just can't decide whether you drink it in the morning or at night. I guess you just drink it all day long. You just gotta think that even if you get up at 10 in Italy, it will be 4 p.m. So it's never too early to start drinking. I, I don't know if that's really good advice. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. Oh, we, I think the bar opens at the club at three, so. Perfect. <laughs> okay, so in my professional opinion, our drink is ready, so I'm gonna turn the gas off and I'm just gonna let it cool down for a few minutes. You don't need to cover it because you actually want it to cool down. So if you put a lid on it, it's gonna stay warm and it's gonna kind of keep cooking. So we're just gonna let it sit for a few minutes with the gas turned off and it does smell amazing. Uh, it, it really smells like, it, it brings back like holiday memories from home. So it's, it's a delicious drink, it's very easy and it smells amazing. So we're just gonna let it sit for a few minutes until it cools down and then we're gonna go and try it. Awesome. Julie, have you ever had more wine? I have not actually, and I'm very excited to come downstairs and try some in a little bit. Um, especially because this year, my sister has also said that we're going to make some mulled wine. She was oh. very excited about this concept to go with our Thanksgiving dinner. So Okay, okay, that's exciting. Well, I never said that you could come and try this one, so I'm a little disappointed you didn't ask me, but we can make it work. Uh, anyway, if you, if anybody wants to start getting ready their glasses, usually Mold wine, it's best when served in ceramic uh, cups. So if you have any tea mugs or like any coffee mugs, you can definitely use those. Uh, or you can use uh, rug glasses. You want glasses that have a thick consistency with a nice solid base. Um, but that's not really ideal because the glass is going to get really hot and you can burn yourself. 
So I would say the best choice, it's either a coffee mug or a tea mug, a uh, ceramic, nice and thick, where like you're not going to burn your hands as you're holding the glass. But if you're somebody that gets like really cold hands, then this is very nice. You can just kind of hold it and it's going to keep you warm and it tastes amazing. So I'm going to wait a few more minutes and then we're going to pour it out and we're going to go for the tasting. Uh, Joe Carlo, would you speak a little bit on potential garnishes for a drink like this? So I purposely left out um, the original ingredients. So the way you usually garnish, the traditional way to garnish mold wine is to add two or three cinnamon sticks and two or three all anise tar. And then you cut a nice slice of orange and you put it on the side or inside your drink. It depends. If you want a little extra citrus, you can put it inside your glass with the, with the warm wine, or you can just cut a little slice and you just put it right on the side of your glass, just as a little garnish. And then I'm gonna put some extra cinnamon sticks and some extra star anise. Those are the best garnishes, to be honest. Um, and I think we had some team members who were saying that they were getting fancy and they dried orange slices. So there's a lot of different options out there. That is amazing. Yeah, dried orange will look amazing and it's gonna add a, light, a nice kick to it. You can definitely do that. You can do even dry lemon or dry lime. But if you want to stick to the tradition from the old Romans, you would just do orange, cinnamon sticks, and star anise. But definitely dried orange would be amazing. Even blood orange. If you have like dried dry, blood orange, would be delicious. 100% would be amazing. So I think the wine has cooled down enough. So I'm going to attempt to pour it without burning my hands. So I have a sink right below me, so I'm going to try to do it in the sink. Now, I don't know if people from home can see it, but it definitely looks like wine, but you can see that has a different consistency and it's a little more a dark red, almost like a brown. So it looks, it's a reduction, it's a little thicker. It's not much thicker. It's not, the consistency doesn't change drastically, but when you drink it, you can definitely tell on your tongue that is a reduction. It is almost like, it's not syrupy. I don't want to confuse anybody in thinking that it gets extremely thick but you can def definitely tell that it's wine, but also different than wine. And it's on a dark red with a little brown. And then once we have our orange, we're gonna get two cinnamon sticks and we're gonna put it inside. And we're gonna finish with two nice star anise. There it is, that's the final product. Beautiful. We have Anne, uh, Adam and Melissa asking, does the quality of the wine matter much when you're making mold wine? So um, I would say, yes, um, I definitely would not use any expensive wine because the fact that you are simmering it, um, it doesn't damage the wine, but if you have a really expensive wine, you don't want to cook it. You just want to drink it and enjoy it the way it is. Um, we use a California Cabernet, um, which is on the medium range. Uh, I would not use anything fancy like French wines because those are just meant to be, you got to drink it the way the wine was supposed to be drunk, like room temperature or maybe between 47 and 53 degrees. That's the best way. But definitely the type of red wine matters. You always want to go with a Cabernet Sauvignon or you can use a Pinot Noir because Pinot Noir is a specific type of wine. Um, the Pinot Noir, it's very special because the variety of grapes grows very thick. So there is very little space in between the little, uh, the, the grapes, and it takes a longer time to mature. So the wine, it's almost as rich and tart as Cabernet. So Pinot Noir is really good. Cabernet Sauvignon is really good. And in general, a lot of Italian wines, if you have any Sangiovese or any Syrah, those are like really good wines for mold wine, but nothing crazy expensive. You don't have to go out of your way to find a very fancy French wine, Italian wine, Anything that you find at any common store would be absolutely fine. And they always say, don't cook with wine that you wouldn't drink with. That also makes sense. You don't wanna, you don't wanna cook it with wine that you know of being like, that is not really bad wine, but you don't wanna use something that you know that you don't like because at the end of the day, you're gonna be drinking it. So it needs to be a wine that you know that you enjoy, that you appreciate the taste of it. So I definitely agree with that. 
Awesome. Well, I mean, I love this beautiful presentation. I'm very excited to go see it in person. Does anyone have any other questions? Hey, Julia, I just wanted to say I am drinking it and it is delicious. So oh. I added a little bit of a, a fresh orange to it because I just really like that citrus. I did add some bourbon, so I'm not going anywhere tonight for sure, but uh, this is delicious. So thank you so much. That's thank amazing. I'm glad you're enjoying it. I hope everyone else gets a chance to trick, try out this recipe um, for your Thanksgiving dinners or, you know, just any other day. As we said, it's very healthy and it's good for you. <laughs> um, but thank you all so much for joining us. Um, we hope to see you at another event soon. We do have a little pre-Thanksgiving happy hour happening tomorrow at 6.30 if you want to just come on and connect with some fellow members before the holiday. Um, otherwise, hope to see you at an event soon. Have a good one. Thank you so much. Happy holidays. Thank you. It was wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving.